Welcome everyone. I'll start again. Welcome everyone to our first I3 event of the year. My name is Malika Santani and I'm part of the USC Career Center. I'm joined by my colleagues, Lauren Opkenorth and Ryan Joshua, who are going to be taking notes and also manning the chat and any questions that might come in. I3 is a super exciting event where you get to hear from employers firsthand in an industry that you're interested in, hear their advice on how to navigate internships, what to look for on your application, and just ask them any questions during our networking event that will be from 11.15 to one o'clock. Ryan's gonna be dropping that in the chat through the event as well for you all to register. And we'll go ahead and get started with our first question. So I'll go ahead and ask everyone to please introduce yourself and tell us about your organization. I'm gonna go in order of my squares on the screen. So we'll start with Nikita. Hi everyone, thanks so much for having me. My name is Nikita and I am I work at W2O Group and W2O is a healthcare communications firm and a PR agency. And our primary focus is on healthcare. So I'm an account manager and I get to work closely with a lot of our biotechnology and pharmaceutical clients supporting their communications activities. So this can be anything around medical meetings, regulatory milestones and things like that. Thank you. Andrea? Hello, I'm Andrea Lacey. I'm the program director at No Limits for Deaf Children in Los Angeles. And our program um, helps and serves underserved uh, children with hearing loss, children and families with hearing loss um, all over the globe, actually. Um, the pandemic has actually helped us really expand our services. So um, we right now we're doing all of our services remote, but usually we are in person in um, Culver City, Oxnard, and Las Vegas, and we're always looking to expand to, to more centers. Um, we provide after school speech and language therapy, um, literacy classes, fun elective classes, um, parent classes, parent education classes. And over the summer, we have a theater program and we have a national theater production that is um, uh, performed by a lot of the deaf adults and alumni that have gone through No Limits. Thank you, Camille. Hi everyone, my name is Camille Pridgelana. I am the Programs and Development Associate at the LeGrant Foundation. We're based in Los Angeles, but we serve students across the country. Our mission is to basically help ethnic uh, minority students, undergrad and graduate, get their foot in the door in the advertising, marketing, and public relations industry. So we do that in a variety of ways. We offer an annual scholarship program, which is open right now. So um, there's that. We also do a mentorship program as well, and internships as well. Um, a really interesting fact, I guess, Nikita uh, is from W2O and they're, um, the CEO of W2O is, sits on our board. So it's interesting that we have that connection here. Um, but yeah. Thank you. I love the small world connections. Linda. Yeah, I'm Linda Reinstein. I'm the co-founder and president of a nonprofit based in Los Angeles. It's called the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization. Uh, we do state and national and international work, are working primarily on prevention and public policy. Uh, our efforts are to obviously eliminate exposure to uh, reduce the diseases, but primarily we work on a human rights, uh, environmental racism, environmental injustice issues, and our network of individuals, we work with AGs, Surgeon Generals, lawmakers, and we have accomplished great things in the last 17 years. Uh, this is not the first time I am participating in a USC career event. I've been doing it for 10 years. I get the best and the brightest. I'm a Trojan mom, uh, and I love the opportunity to build this, yeah, the hands up, uh, safe space for uh, students to really explore their passions, their dreams, and their purpose, and give them an environment where I can grow them. Thank you for sharing. Okay, Steve and Trevor, we'll do you both together. So this is Trevor. I am a, uh, I run a, a software company. I'm uh, president and COO uh, in LA, although like everyone, we are uh, dispersed around the country right now. Uh, we are the leader in text-based payments. So we enable merchants to take payments, credit card, debit card payments over text. Uh, we have a direct to merchant application 
the majority of our business is a bit more um, complex in that we are actually the technology that's embedded in lots of other applications uh, where you might receive a text payment request. So we're embedded in applications that run veterinary hospitals or run auto body shops or run uh, jewelry repair shops. And we enable uh, a myriad of industries and an ever growing number of merchants to add text payments um, to their ways in which they accept payments. Obviously COVID has created an entirely new paradigm with um, communication being the fastest growing platform for not only accepting payments, but also um, interacting with customers. So rather you're on a communications platform like Zoom or over text uh, or over chat bots, those are the solutions that we integrate into. Um, we're a fast growing LA based uh, software company. Steve, do you want to jump in? Yeah. So my name is Steve Spilsky. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Stay Open. Stay Open is a sleep as a service provider that offers affordable, flexible, and socially engaging uh, long and short-term accommodations to travelers and, and people looking to live in a, anywhere they want in a frictionless manner. Um, we're, we're kind of a combination of taking the old business model of a youth hostel and, and giving you a, a kind of 2.0 version where we make the properties very nice. We make them socially engaging. We're very technology forward. We're all about using the properties in real estate to bring people together in the real sense, physically and experiences. Um, and right now, um, COVID like has affected us, but it's actually helped us significantly because there's a lot of uh, available real estate, a lot of retail office and you name it, empty space. And at the end of the day, everyone needs a bed at night, whether you're traveling for a few days or you wanna work remote for 30 days and stay in Venice while you're working in wherever you are in the US, we wanna provide the most frictionless experience from a technology and a social engagement perspective and a community driven perspective. Um, so that's what we're doing uh, with, with Stay Open. Um, and I am a two-time Trojan alum, so fight on, class of 2000 accounting undergrad. And then I also got my MBA in a class of 2012. Um, so I liked it so much, I went back for seconds. Um, and uh, second time doing uh, this event. So happy to be back and look forward to answering more questions. Thank you. Always excited when we have other Trojans on the call. We'll end with Olivia, Jeff, and then Amy. Awesome. I'm Olivia. Um, I'm also a Trojan. I graduated in 2019. So I studied communications in Annenberg and I loved it. And I now work at Crafted PR. So Crafted specializes in consumer and consumer tech accounts. So we work with clients ranging from Califia Farms, which I'm sure many of you have had their oat milk, to HTC Vive, uh, the VR headset. Um, I currently work on Logically, which is a fact-checking, misinformation-fighting startup. So really exciting and super relevant. Um, and we're really looking forward to finding some interns to join us. Thanks, Olivia. Hi, uh, I'm Jeff Hensick. I'm uh, with Jewish World Watch. Uh, we're an anti-genocide organization that supports, uh, supports mass atrocity survivors through um, advocacy and international projects. Um, we're rooted in Jewish and universal values um, that all people deserve a life of dignity free from persecution. Um, and uh, we, bring, we inspire to, uh, people to come together to fight genocide uh, through education. I'm not a USC alum, but my aunt, grandmother, and uncle all graduated from USC. So that's close. All right, and I back clean up. So I'm Amy Friedman Cecil. I am the director of education for Jewish World Watch. What Jeff said is a, is a good statement of who we are. Um, and I guess if we're doing our creds, um, I went to USC to get my master's in education. My husband is a graduate and so are my in-laws. So there you go. Awesome. See, it's all in the Trojan family. So excited to have all of you. Thank you for sharing a little bit about yourselves and your organizations. 
And now we're going to go more on the industry focus. So our students are here to learn about digital communication and media, maybe marketing, advertising, and PR. For those that want to share, can you give a little bit of information on your career path and how you got to where you are, as well as why you chose this industry? Sure, I'm happy to start. Um, so I, I started my career path, actually, I was, I was an accounting undergrad at USC. I wanted to make sure that right out of school, I had a really strong foundation in terms of understanding really the language of business, which is numbers. Um, and I wanted to be able to have a great opportunity right out of school to work at a large service firm. So I, um, the accounting program at USC is wonderful. I had offers from every single, at the time, it was a big five firm. I ended up starting with PricewaterhouseCoopers in San Jose during kind of the, the tail end of the dot-com boom. I did a lot of workouts and companies were, were messed up. So I did a lot of cleanup work from a accounting perspective and consulting perspective. And that led me to move to San Francisco with PwC. And then I did an international assignment in Russia with PwC. So I kind of got this itch for just global exposure and working in different parts of the world. And then I always loved real estate and knowing numbers really was transferable to understanding how real estate is financed, how it's developed, the underlying sort of economics of real estate, the value creation of the asset. So I got into that working for a fund in Europe. And then I moved back to the US and started financing and developing traditional hotels, a lot of them in the Los Angeles area. So built a couple large funds financing. The largest project we did was the um, Waldorf Astoria in Beverly Hills that we financed. We financed a, a new hotel that actually opened um, on the Keck Medical School campus, the Hyatt House. We provided a large piece of the capital there. Um, we're finishing building a large hotel by LAX. And then I saw all the pain points of developing and operating hotels under the traditional business model, working with Hyatt's and Marriott's and and just saw that it was inefficient, it was expensive, you had to build ground up, and then these brands really weren't connecting with people in any way and were very technologically backward. So that's where kind of the idea of Stay Open was born is there's gotta be a quicker, faster, more efficient way to get hotels and properties open um, for the biggest need, at least in our communities, which is a bed at night for people that's affordable, but how do we do it so it's, so it's fun and socially engaging and then looked at sort of hostels and everyone loved staying in hostels in terms of the social experience but everyone said didn't like the the noisy bedrooms or the bathrooms so we said let's let's make really nice pods let's make really cool socially engaging areas so that's where we came up with stay open and it was this kind of evolution where I kind of built on all these foundational building blocks from from really day one and I, I still use my finance and accounting knowledge that I learned 20 years ago every day in my business and now growing uh, a lot of different aspects as well in terms of marketing, communications, PR, just all the stuff that we're doing as a mature company now. Thanks, Steve. I'm gonna pass it on to Trevor because you have your hand raised. So I think my background originally through education was in communications. Um, I was actually a double major, architecture and speech communications. And I immediately, like many of you guys from the student population, uh, went into computer technology because it had a lot to do with architecture and speech communications, I guess. Um, the reality is, you know, the, the building blocks around being able to communicate, being able to problem solve, understand, uh, convince, and explain are fundamental to every business. And what drew me into the software business was my interest in creating new things. So I've done six technology startups, uh, one in sporting goods, um, and through that journey, had the opportunity to be, you know, have a couple of them acquired uh, in the uh, in the fintech space. Uh, lived in San Francisco during the dot com era. Uh, that company was acquired in the in the big data space. And so through each of those things, sort of got to branch out. Um, got to live in London and run the product group for a payments company. Got to run the product team for Bank of America for a number of years uh, before joining the, the Authvia as a startup. And with that sort of kept going back to the roots around the fundamentals of this are communication. The fundamentals are understanding the customer journey. Whether you're building the product or selling it, uh, at Authvia, we look at this now as that intersection between the technology, the communication platforms like messaging and texting, and the ability to take payments. But it sort of keeps coming back to that, you know, what are you going to school to learn? You're going to learn to 
going to school to learn to be social, to communicate, to explain, and ultimately you're going to find all of those things woven back into whatever business you pursue. So, you know, for me, this journey has been, I like to invent things. We do that over and over again in the tech business. Authvia is just the latest of those pieces, but the fundamental job, whether you're a product manager, whether you're a marketing manager, whether you're CEO is understanding the problem first, being able to communicate, explain and listen, and then ultimately being able to communicate a solution. So I see it sort of recurring theme again and again that uh, you guys are probably seeing as, as you think about a lot of these opportunities, regardless of the industry you go into, it's gonna be the same skill set uh, each time. No, thanks for sharing, Trevor. We'll go to Linda, then Nikita, and then we'll go to the next question. Thanks for uh, letting me tell you about the journey. So quite briefly, it was about 17 years ago that my husband was diagnosed with an asbestos caused disease, which is completely preventable. And at that time, I had never really paid attention to whether or not there were toxins in our air, water and soil. So as a result of Alan's medical journey and ultimately his death, I did co-found an organization and I really learned the hard way, the power of digital storytelling. So as a course of our, of our 17 years, most of my work is done in DC and I take my interns to, to DC to help me with staff briefings. We write press releases and statements. In fact, I'm working one, uh, Malika knows I'm working on an uh, EPA hearing tomorrow. So our work is policy driven, but we use education and advocacy. And if you can't tell a story, a real story that is heard, felt, shared, and remembered, then you miss the boat in my world. And I have a millisecond. You guys are millennials. You're young. I'm 65. If we can't connect to you digitally, whether it's in print, in, in, on TikTok, elsewhere, then we have missed a large group to really engage with. So that's the part of the digital communications that has, has really sparked my work and allowed me to play on a field that is really by big chemistry, chamber of commerce, those sometimes the guys that wear the, 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 the black hats and with um, technology, I can compete in an industry that is really uneven and people don't know that. And we've been very effective. Thank you. Nikita? Yeah, I still like to think of myself as very much in the early stages of my career. I've been at W2O for about a couple years now. And in undergrad, I studied biology. So I spent a lot of my time in the labs and doing clinical research internships. And I was really drawn to kind of disease awareness for the patient community and creating digestible communications content to reach these communities, which led me to explore um, healthcare communications as a career path. And at W2, I've definitely gotten a lot of opportunities to pursue that patient engagement and understanding like obstacles in a community and creating disease awareness content based on that. So just wanted to share a little bit about, you know, how I went from completely being in a lab in a mic like with a microscope in clinical research settings and found my way um, to over to communications and how it's a really great way to have multifaceted backgrounds as well. well. Thank you all for sharing. And it's a great segue to our next question. It was kind of touched upon that there's definitely certain benefits of working in your industry, staying connected to your consumers and customers and staying updated on the times. But can anyone share what are some of the benefits and challenges to working in this industry? Okay, Andrea. Hello again. So um, I actually work as the program director at No Limits. So my, I'm kind of overseeing a lot of what's happening day to day. And I have to communicate with these interns that we pot potentially would want the communication side, the social media, the, the digital marketing. And we have a, a digital marketing team, um, someone who runs our, our, pro, our, our system. But we could always use other people. And something that is really rewarding about this is that it's always changing and um, you see the what you're producing, what you're coming up with, what you're creating is really making an impact on the community. So you come up with a really impactful video that we're gonna share with funders or donors or on social media, and you see the the reward and the challenge that, that you went through. You see that 
when you get a response from a parent like, thank you so much, this was a beautiful production, or thank you so much for um, adding the caption so my kids can read um, the other kids' speeches. Um, so for us, I think it's just every step of the way, you just find something rewarding every day, even with the challenges that come, which brings me to the challenges that you things get thrown at you really quick in a nonprofit world. One day you could be working on a project and the next day your boss says, we need to switch gears and go to another project and this needs to be done by noon, help me out. And everybody, all hands on decks, all hands on deck gets it done and it you have to be prepared for that quick change. Um, and I think another challenge is always just doing research on what's what's going to promote our company in the best way instead of staying in the past. Um, I think making changes as things change in the world and in the industry, you have to be able to do research, you know, one, take one day, one hour out of your week and read an article about what, what things are happening in the tech world and what's happening on uh, TikTok or social media. Like, what should we promote? What hashtag should we use? What are people looking at? What do people want to see? And so you just have to be able to be flexible and not every day come to work and expect the same exact thing every single morning. Thank you. We'll go to Jeff. I'm going to echo a little bit of what she just said, but uh, I think one of the benefits of working in this industry is that you have to keep up with trends uh, and current events, and it's also one of the challenges. So you have to strike a balance between the two. Uh, you have to keep up with what's current and what's going on right now, whether it's on TikTok or a, a hashtag, but not get so caught up um, in the immediate uh, that you lose sight of your core values as an organization. Um, uh, and then, and then in terms of current events, uh, you're constantly on your toes, uh, in most of our industries. Um, for example, um, just this week, a topic that we've been covering since 2017, um, the Rwanda genocide in Myanmar, um, turned on its head when, uh, the military, uh, stage a coup, stage a coup over the weekend. Um, so we had to go into crisis communications mode, um, and the, the challenge of that is maintaining the way we talk about the subject and the way we talk as Jewish World Watch uh, while covering such a such a new and evolving topic. Thanks, Jeff. We'll go to Linda, but if anyone else wants to answer, feel free to raise your hand or we'll move on to the next question, now pivoting to advice for our students. So Linda. Yeah. So with nonprofit communications, um, like Andrea and Jeff have shared, it's very different and dynamic. When you're working with policy, you either make news or you use news to drive your mission, vision, and your goals forward for lawmakers and for the media. Our, our primary uh, pathway to get stories written is obviously is building the relationships with the media, and we, we will use the news. Most nonprofits are short on human resources, human and financial, so if we can't use the news and our relationships to communicate our work, then we have a missed opportunity. So communications for me and for my work is invaluable. And it's also the tone and the pitch. Are you speaking uh, to lawmakers? Are you speaking to the general public? And being able to adapt communications in this very fast moving pace is also an important part. Perfect, thank you. And that's a great segue to our next question, which is just kind of adding on to what you all have shared. But students are here to be curious and learn about your industry. So what advice would you offer to students that are interested in pursuing a career in marketing or digital media or communication? So we'll go to Olivia first. Yeah, so hopefully um, since I'm pretty junior in my career and just out of USC, um, this insight can be helpful to all of you. But I think the biggest thing is taking advantage of the internship opportunities that USC has. So just being a part of this event is already so helpful. Um, meeting people, doing so much networking that you can, messaging people on LinkedIn. If there's a company that you think is super cool, find someone there who you can set up an informational interview with. Or if there's this really cool campaign, go find the PR agency that did it and let them know that you thought it was cool. Um, I think that's very crucial to kickstarting your career and also figuring out what you want and just getting your foot in the door um, and really making a name for yourself. Thank you for sharing. Trevor? 
I think probably uh, even in advance of Olivia saying that, I, that that advice is is so critical. And I think one of the things that you guys need to recognize is nobody here is looking for a worker, right? So as you think about your career in this industry and as you think about your opportunity for an internship, there's nobody who's saying, I need a worker. We've got lots of workers. There's plenty of people that we can go pay minimum wage to uh, in LA, around the country, around the world. What we are looking for is future leaders. And so the opportunity that you guys have here is to show up somewhere, physically or virtually, take ownership for a problem. Listen to what's going on. Listen to whoever your coach, your mentor, uh, your boss is in this internship, internship. But find a way to bridge that, not into solving the immediate thing that they needed, the filing, the coffee, the whatever the, you, know, you think they're going to ask you to do, but actually find the problem that you want to solve there and really help them solve it over a small amount of time, right? Again, we are looking for a completely different type of person, which is why we're investing an exorbitant amount of time in the internship program, right? It's easy to go hire someone to do a job. It's really hard to find a future leader, either for ourselves, or we know you're gonna go back to school, right? We know you may not be available long-term, but we're creating more people that we want to hire in the future by making this investment in you guys and you guys making it in, in companies like ours. So take ownership, you know, this is a, a safe place and a safe experience to try some new things and really act like a leader when you get there. And I think you'll be rewarded for that in your internship experience. Um, same is going to be true in, in a career, but it's a lot easier to test drive in the internship. Thanks, Trevor. That's really important advice for our students. And you are all helping them become emerging leaders. So we are very appreciative to have you all here. We'll go Linda and Steve, and then we'll go to our next question. Yeah, I think to, to build a safe space for learning, like you may start in a comm department, but you realize that you, you are a better fit elsewhere, but starting at a nonprofit, or as Trevor talked about, the time that we invest in our interns really gives you the time and place to do your own personal explorations. I am so proud that I've worked with 20 plus interns from USC. They've all gone on to grad school and have built careers and lives that they're very proud of. When you work at a nonprofit, you're not gonna get the highest wage, but you're gonna get the best feel good experience you could ever have to be the change you wanna see in the world. Thanks, Linda. Steve? And just to add a couple things, um, come in doing doing some research, really to the extent that you can understand the industry, the areas that you're in interested in. Um, business gets nuanced and it's great when someone comes to you and you don't even have to know everything, but as long as you've started to make that effort to be proactive about learning about the industry, because that's just gonna show an aptitude for, for the future ability to continue to learn ask questions and um, do everything you can to put yourself in the room with, with people higher up in the organization, with executives or, or management or just other people, whatever that is. If, if it's pouring coffee for people and sitting into, in a meeting and that's what it takes for you to be in an ex executive meeting, sit there. I, I love the more people that are around whatever level of, of job we have, the better because that's where you're really gonna learn. You're gonna get that sort of inside baseball those are going to be the things that are just so valuable that no one has exposure to. You, you kind of see the good, the bad, and the ugly. You see it all, and then you kind of see what the true problems are. You see how solutions are, are created, and then you obviously develop an aptitude for helping with that. So whatever you can, just, just get yourself in the room with, with, with people and, and absorb. Be, be that sponge because you're going to take that away. Remember some things forever. Thank you all. So... For our students that are on the call, all of our employers that are on this panel sharing their advice on how to navigate your career are also all actively recruiting for internships. So we just wanna have this be a space and time for all of you to share what are the qualities that you look for in an intern, as well as what are some of the projects that you have interns working on in an internship? And we'll start with Camille. Yeah, so I think in terms of qualities that we're looking for in an intern, you know, it's it's really easy to teach skills. Um, it's not, I think it's sort of hard to teach uh, people to have a good attitude <laughs> and to be willing to wear many hats. Um, we're uh, 
pretty small team here at the LeGrant Foundation. Um, so we are, you know, we have to learn how to pivot and be adaptable and, and learn different skills that might be outside of our typical job description, right? So um, we're really looking for interns that are willing to learn anything and everything. Um, I think that skills are definitely transferable across all industries. You know, I graduated uh, with a journalism degree and here I am in a nonprofit setting. So, you know, I mean, I learned how, I've, learn how to write and it's helpful in, in, in my job, but um, I've learned throughout my jobs and in this job to sort of transfer that skill and adapt it to what uh, the skill is at hand. Um, and so that is what we're sort of looking for in turn, just sort of someone who um, is willing to learn, has follow through, um, willing to ask questions when they when they don't know, um, because no one knows everything. I'm still asking questions every day. Um, and then interns basically just, we we have them do uh, different things throughout the organization, which is whether, whether it be putting together newsletters or reaching out to our different partners and stuff like that. Um, posting on social media, putting together different programs. Um, so, you know, it really is a, a, an all around um, internship pro program here. Thanks, Camille. Steve? Um, yeah, look, I think it's similar to what I said, just having um, that open-mindedness. I tell this to a lot of people, kind of finding that, that likability factor, right? I mean, people just, just the, the communication skills, being able to engage, being able to communicate and doing so in a, in a way where you exhibit likability to, to your coworkers, to your friends, to the community is just so important because um, everyone's gonna make mistakes. We all do in, in business and personal situations in life, like mistakes are made. The, the true testament of an individual's character is how those mistakes are handled. What is the reaction? How do you solve the problem? Um, how do you not overreact? And, and, and that I, I tell a lot of people is, is really the, the key because it's not that things aren't going to go wrong. It's what do you do when things go wrong? And the sooner someone can develop those skill sets of handling problems, the, the better that you're going to advance in your career or business or, or really anything in life, period. So it's the same advice I give to my kids <laughs> as well. It's always good advice if you share it with your kids too. <laughs> okay, Andrea? So some of the projects like um, Camille said too, we're, we're very well-rounded with our internship. We have a lot of different opportunities too. So um, we aren't just looking for one intern. We could, you know, take up to three interns with different jobs, or one person who's well-rounded in one job, uh, or all three of them. Um, but some some things that we really, you know, something at our company that we really need is um, like a social media manager, somebody who's really interested in learning about our social media and help how to help us grow on social media, um, and then through that and through the other projects, through graphic design, some of the graphic design things that we need or developing flyers or um, creating graphics for grants, stuff like that. Those um, things are just all how we help tell the story of No Limits. So someone, a well-rounded uh, intern for us is someone who wants to help us tell our story to the community, to our grant writer or to the people who are, we're sending our grants to, to funders, to donors, to families, to parents, to other people across the country and the world. Um, we just really need someone who's there to help us tell that story and really wants to learn how to tell a story at a nonprofit because it's a very different world. And I can, I was a teacher before I started here. So this is not my, this is not where I went, what I went to school for at all. Um, I was a teacher for kids with hearing loss. So it kind of meshed well together, but working at a school and working at a nonprofit is a completely different world. And so someone who's interested in learning more about nonprofits and um, understanding that it does take a lot of people in the community to, to make that nonprofit work. Wonderful, thank you. Jeff? Uh, the one quality that I think would it applies to whether you work with Jewish World Watch or any of the other employers here um, is to be curious. Uh, ask questions when you don't understand something. Um, that's fine. The worst thing you can do is is be assigned a project, um, uh, not understand certain key elements, um, and not ask about them. We're with any of these employers here. You're here to learn with them. 
uh, as much as it'll benefit any of us uh, to have you working with us, uh, at the end of the day, it's to help you grow uh, both personally and in your career. So just make sure you ask questions um, and don't be shy about that. Um, in terms of projects that we have coming up, um, we are, thank goodness, launching a, a new design website um, in the next few months. Um, and there's gonna be a lot of content planning um, that is gonna go into that. Um, and we, we could use some support with that. Um, and uh, as with any small nonprofit, um, we are seeking uh, more hands on our social media accounts uh, to deepen our uh, communications and connection with our audience. Thanks, Jeff. Olivia? Yeah, I think piggybacking off of what Jeff said about being curious is huge. I think, you know, when you come out of college or you're still in college, there's this like expectation we put on ourselves to just act like we know everything or we're supposed to know everything. It can feel really intimidating. Uh, but I think taking time to actually ask questions and be honest about what you know and what you don't know, like Jeff said, so that way you can learn um, and just have those honest conversations with the team that you're on is really gonna take you far in your career. And then in terms of what Crafted is looking for in an intern, I think kind of like a lot of people on this call have said is social media expertise. Um, so one of our clients right now is Beef and Lamb New Zealand, which is like the whole campaign representing farmers in New Zealand. And we're kicking off Pinterest with them. And we'd love to have some interns who could support on that. And then on the other hand with Logically, which is the misinformation fighting startup, um, we're super hands on deck with them. Obviously a very hot topic right now. So just an intern who's willing to kind of muck in um, and be all for it and eager to help and has an eye on, on social media for what people are talking about and to just inform some of our strategy and planning would be great. Thanks, Olivia. And we'll go with Steve and then go to our next questions. Yeah, sorry, I didn't go into kind of what, what kind of projects we're looking for, which is a ton. <laughs> um, we're completely revamping our, our website. Our social media is gonna be completely uh, basically wiped and scrubbed in, in, in the next three months. We're gonna have a very cohesive branded approach to all of our um, outreach, Instagram, TikTok. Um, and we just hired a awesome, he's such a beautiful individual, a chief creative officer, which is kind of uncommon for a hospitality or tech company, but he has a background in music video direction and production. Um, so we're doing just a lot of very cool, beautiful, creative things for brand cohesion. And then the hard part is how do you tell that story through social media and digital assets that's different, that's genuine, that connects with communities, that's diverse. Um, you know, there's kind of these canned images, photos, things that people do and they're nice, but I think we need a really kind of, we need an evolution of, of the next phase of how we communicate with our audience. And that's, that's what we're set out to do. So um, obviously um, interns, people that, that are coming out of school um, are right in that age demographic of our target audience. So hearing what their voice is would be very important to us in terms of shaping our campaigns. Thank you, Steve. And thank you all for sharing. I think for our students, if you're taking notes on this, these are things you can add to your resume, think about putting on your LinkedIn. And these are skills that these employers are all looking for when wanting to pursue a career in digital media and communication. So you're hearing it first from the experts. So now kind of shifting to the application materials and what it takes to get an internship, I do want to ask about networking. So Olivia, mention that if you ever have an interest in a company or something that they're doing, don't be afraid to reach out to them and tell them how cool you think it is. So networking is huge for the internship search. So what advice do you have for students for networking, whether it's in person or virtually? And now that that's all we're doing right now. I'll go to Nikita and then Trevor, then Linda. Yeah, so I think a big thing that I learned when I was going heavy with the networking, looking for a job and internships in undergrad was getting over that fear of, you know, reaching out to people who might not know me or have necessarily a reason to help me. But I think 
I learned very quickly that people are a lot more willing to talk to you and help than you would assume. And a lot of people are really willing to take the time out of their day to, you know, tell you about their career path, tell you about their industry, answer questions that you have. So I think that was kind of the first step for me. And um, another thing that I really found helpful was utilizing my alumni network. So things like, I'm really interested in this company. Is there someone who went to my school that works there now that would be willing to talk to me? And kind of, it builds that connection between you two, which I think is really helpful. And I didn't go to USC myself, but I have so many friends who have gone and family members and you know, it's a very expansive network with a lot of opportunities to utilize. So I think that's a very big thing there. And just, you know, one tip slash trick that I learned as well is send a lot of LinkedIn connection requests and always add a personal note to them. You know, it, it compels the person you're requesting to want to talk to you and want to accept your request and connect and talk further. So those are just a couple of the things that I've learned along the way. And those have actually led me to direct internship opportunities. I, you know, cold emailed someone who was an alumni at my university and said, I would love some career advice. And I think after a couple of coffee chats, um, he ended up interviewing me for an internship position. So um, don't be afraid to reach out to people at all. Thank you. Is that a Trevor? So I think I obviously agree with everything that Nikita said. I think that LinkedIn is a huge opportunity that just didn't exist you know, a decade ago in its current form. You guys should not be afraid to reach out over LinkedIn to the CEO of any company that you're interested in. Uh, if you don't get a response, that should be the expectation. But absolutely then go to the CMO and then go to the head of communications and feel free to use that. Uh, eventually someone is going to respond particularly if you exhibit the skills that they're looking for, right? Are you an intellectual athlete? Do you have a great attitude? Are you showing that you're a self-starter? Uh, can you suggest to them things that you can do that might be on their list? So at Authvia, you know, we're, we're working on a, a new version of the website. We're working constantly on refining sales and marketing plans. Uh, we're talking about demand gen and we're in a space that's very technical, right? We do text-based payments doesn't exist today, you're inventing the future. And so if you are networking and you're talking about things that they, you know are important to their business in the long run, you're going to get a response. And so having your own elevator pitch down, right? Building into your own conversational uh, processes, the same thing that you know they're gonna need you to do for their company or their product or their communication method is really that first step. And so, when you exhibit those behaviors, people will be drawn to you. Uh, companies are looking at all times for their next great athletes. And so you just need to exhibit that while you're doing it. Uh, the last part of it is don't be afraid of using the network that you have. Uh, one of my best friends, when we went to university, uh, we, we painted uh, and washed and waxed boats uh, in the Seattle area. So I'm not a USC alum, I'm a Husky. Um, I come from a day when that was a huge football rivalry. So. Uh, a little challenging to hear all these stories here, but uh, he, he uh, decided to be a stockbroker. And for the first decade of his career, he never called anyone whose boats we washed. The Nordstrom, the president of Seafirst Bank, et, et, et cetera, because he still thought of himself as the kid who grew up washing and waxing their boats, not the stockbroker who should be managing their money. And I always look at that and say, that was just a massive mistake you aren't who you used to be. You are who you're going to be. Start acting like it and network on that platform um, and then take advantage of the network you have. But it's, a, it's about changing your perspective first. Awesome, thank you. Linda? Yeah, I always uh, tell my interns to grab a little black book. They can always draft on the many uh, people that we work with, our colleagues and other NGOs. But also take a look, you have to be organic, obviously, when you're sharing your story or trying to get a job, but also look online. I once hired an intern who reached out on Twitter. She read our work. She saw a staff briefing we had done. She read a press release and she said, I would love to do this for you. And it was literally on Twitter. So let that internet be a, a resource to you because it's a whole new world that you can reach out to. Um, but networking is big. All I, all I really remind people to do is network respectfully. So you're obviously want to be 
be mindful when you're going through someone else's resources. But I encourage networking. When I take my interns to Washington, D.C., senators are excited to, see, to meet my interns because they know they're the next change leaders. So don't be afraid of networking. I always think it takes a, almost a glass of wine to get into that room to open up your business card case. But, um, you know, it, it is something you have to learn how to do. And it's OK to start. You know, you, you're going to have a lot of different conversations. Thank you, Linda. We'll go to Olivia, then Steve, and then do our last few questions before we end. Yeah, um, I think one really amazing thing about USC is a lot of the adjunct or part-time professors also have really amazing full-time jobs. Um, not that their professor jobs aren't amazing, but um, I actually was able to get some of my internships through my professors at USC. So I think that's a really undervalued resource that you have right at your fingertips. My senior year, one of my professors uh, was the head of communications for the LA Kings. So I just told him I was interested in working at the Kings. I was a huge hockey fan and he was like, well, come work. I didn't even have to apply. He just brought me in. Um, same thing with the Grammys. I was able to get an internship there through that. So I think someone on this call has already said like your network is so valuable and the resources are already there for you, make sure you use it. Um, and even if they're not a professor, but you know they teach at USC and they're working where you want to be, just let them know you're a student there. Everyone wants to help students, so use that. Thanks, Olivia. Steve? Yeah, and I would, um, I mean, obviously we're still in a weird time with, with COVID and restrictions and health, but nothing replaces real life connections and interactions. So be ready. I, I think it's very important for people to, to not get too comfortable with the virtual digital world because the people that are gonna get out there and actually interact are, are gonna leave an impression. Um, so I would just start when obviously when it's safe to do so and, and when it's okay for everyone, but um, people are gonna need to get out of their screens. And the second we're, we're allowed to, I think that the renaissance of people getting out um, in a lot of ways, but especially job search internships, there's no way to replace like the, the energy in a room with an individual to understand kind of what they are like. Um, so when those events start to come and it's safe to do so, and obviously there's, there's gonna be this weird cadence when, when we get back to these things, but just be ready for that and don't get too comfortable in just virtual communication because the people that are gonna do it the old school way even though we're a tech forward company and we live in a technology driven world, nothing replaces a real life connection. That is true. So thank you all for sharing. And Andrea just put in the chat that, um, you know, at her company, they look for individuals that have dedication and interest. So for our students looking at things like their mission statement, vision and values are really important because you can see if it lines up with your own goals and values. And that's a good way to see if a company is right match for you. So thank you for sharing that. So with our last 10 minutes, we'll save this last question. And if there's anything else anyone would like to share with our students, we'll leave that as an open space. But, you know, it's not about just the interview, the networking, it's also that first initial application when students are applying to a position. So what can a student do to stand out for the right reasons on their application? when they're applying for these different positions, especially when certain job pools are getting more saturated and more competitive. We'll go to Amy and then Steve. One of the things that I think you've heard throughout this morning is that we've all taken rather circuitous routes to end up where we are. And that is critically important. So what I look for is someone who shows me as Jeff mentioned earlier, curiosity, excitement, passion for doing whatever it is that we want them to do. I don't necessarily look at the skills that are listed on a resume as much as I look at who the person is telling me that they are. And, uh, you know, everybody can find places to pad a resume with. Um, and that's really obvious to most of us when we see a padded resume. What I want to see is, does this person want the experience that I have to offer? We're not hiring an employee. We are finding someone who we can help mentor 
and who can offer their energy to us. Um, so it really, you, I guess what I'm trying to say is you have to come through who you really are and what you can bring to the table. And it doesn't necessarily mean your skills, because I'll take you if you don't have skills, if you seem like somebody who would be good for my organization and someone that I could do something with that will be good for them. So be you and be your authentic you. Thank you, Amy. Steve, is that a hand up? Oh, no, sorry, I, I just. No, you're all good. We'll go to Camille and then, <laughs> and then Linda. Yeah, I mean, echoing Amy, I totally agree with that sentiment. You know, uh, looking at my resume, it's all over the place. Um, it definitely is not a straight path to where I was at now. Um, but another thing that I also wanted to bring up, and it might sound shallow or whatever, but aesthetic wise, like resume design, I think is very important as well. Um, as you know, marketers, public relations people, communicators, we know how to maybe sell the brand or client that we're working for, right? Or in the nonprofit setting, you know, we're, we're telling the story of our mission. Um, and it's really, I think, important to have your resume sort of tell the story of you, um, not just a black and white text, Times New Romans, 12 point font resume. Um, you know, one of the things I do in my role is I look at scholarship applications all day during the scholarship season. And one of the components is having that resume in there. Um, and I always tell my students, you know, have, have a resume that stands out, that pops, have some color in there, maybe add your headshot in there. It's nice to put a face to a name right off the bat. Um, of course, you know, having that, that substance and those skills in there is important as well, but, but make it look nice. Um, that's always my, my um, advice when, when putting together a resume. Thanks, Camille. Linda? So I am slightly old fashioned in this one. I love a cover letter. I like to know that you did your research, that you know who we are, what we do and how we do it. And you tell me how, how you can bring something new to the table. And I think just to read a resume about all the bullets and skills you do, that's really nice and that's important. But if you want a real creative job with me, write me a cover letter. Take some nugget of something that I've done or that, that speaks to you or maybe an area for change. So for instance, we're working up with the Biden administration, staffing up EPA and other elements. There are gonna be so many opportunities for communication student internships because of all this new policy. So it, wherever you fit on the spectrum, you don't have to be a red or, or a blue political person, but understand the dynamics of what's going on. Every nonprofit is short on time and human resources. So we want to invest in you as the next leaders and give you every experience we have, but make sure that you're authentic, not that generic letter, because I can see those a mile, from a mile away. Tell me about you, be the real you, because you'll do yourself a better service. Yes, definitely. Trevor? Yeah, this is an incredible class. Uh, it, it, just, just going through this and listening to these uh, leaders uh, give this advice, it's, it's, it's huge. Um, I, I'll echo what people said on the resume. I mean, the reality is most of the folks who are applying for internships, most of the folks who you know, have you know, um, you know, undergraduate educations or working on that, you really don't have the skills or the experience that we're looking for. And those bullets on the resume really don't mean much. Um, what you can do in that cover letter, what you can do in your, in your verbiage and the way that you put that resume together is show us that you're an intellectual athlete that you've learned something and been able to apply it. Show us you have a great attitude, that you're a self-starter, that you're creative, right? Those are things that are believable uh, today, uh, you know, that we can say, yeah, they're gonna bring that to the table. The skills that we want you to do in terms of building a marketing plan or assisting with a website design or talking about demand gen, those are things we can teach. Um, we can't teach those other, those other components. So one of the other references and, and sort of the last thing to, to add to your overwhelming work list already is, you know, I every month go back and watch something that Simon Sinek has produced. If you're not familiar with Simon Sinek, uh, Leaders Eat Last or The Power of Why, um, go back and look at some of his marketing advice and then apply it back to what you're doing. Help us understand your why. Help us understand how you're going to interact with our organization. Uh, the most valuable thing to any of us as employers 
is someone that makes our organization better, not gets more work done, but makes everyone else around them better. If you come in and give that life, that energy, that creativity, and make any one of my highly paid employees 2% better, they want to spend an extra hour at work, they want to teach you something, and in doing that, they actually relearn it themselves, uh, that's a huge benefit. And so again, being yourself and showing us really uh, what you're going to bring is, is a big key to that. So thanks everyone for the time. Thank you, Trevor. And thank you all. This has been amazing. And I know all of us are taking notes like, oh, this is so much good advice. We'll go to Andrea before we start to wrap up. Um, so yeah, I just want to reiterate the, I mean, I know we've, we've kind of beat the resumes to the ground at this point, but I have just a simple tip. Um, I'm just really starting to get into that, like putting two resumes next to each other and it, people who have almost exactly the same resume and what did one stand out more than the other? And when I'm looking at resumes for teachers, we, we hire teachers also, when I'm looking at those resumes, I'm looking at what, what their passion is and why they chose that field. But when I'm looking at resumes for graphic design or grant writing or um, social media, I'm, I'm looking at your resume as a picture of what you can maybe bring to our table. So if I have two resumes that have the exact same qualifications, but one of them has a little bit more graphic design that you can tell that they kind of created themselves. I might go with that person and interview them first. And then if, you know, they live up to that standard that they have already set for themselves, then that's a great match for us. So just really taking the time and not, um, not just sending your same resume to every person that you want to hire, really take the time to review each company that you're looking for. And and applying for the ones that fit with you because not every place is for you and it's and it's not, it's okay. It's okay that if not every company is for you, it, it, you don't have to just put your resume out there just to get the internship. Because like everybody said, we're hiring people who want to be in this field with us to help grow other people to be good leaders and, and uh, communicators just like we are. <laughs> no, thank you all for sharing sharing. We're in our last two minutes, so I'm just going to leave it open if anyone wants any last minute information to share with our students. All of our employers are going to be at our networking event following this event from 11.15 to 1 p.m. on Brazen, so you can meet with all of them, chat with them one-on-one, -on -one, ask them your own questions about your application and who you are and get to know them better, but really it's been such an amazing panel. You all have provided so much amazing advice. And as career advisors, it always makes us happy to hear it from the experts directly. So we'll just leave it open there. Thank you for including us. This has been fabulous. Anytime. I just wanted to quickly bring up, um, TLF is currently accepting scholarship applications through the end of the month. I will drop down a link to the chat. Um, it is open for undergraduate and graduate students um, studying advertising, marketing, PR, communications. Uh, so definitely please take advantage. My boss always says never leave money on the table. Um, and if there's an opportunity for it, go for it. So the link will be in the chat. And if anybody wants to work at, with public health and environmental NGOs, I'm happy to answer those questions too, outside of my own work. Thank you, Linda. And thank you all. This has been amazing. And we have three more I3 events too. And actually some of our employers on this call will be like joining us in other sessions. So we have later this afternoon, data science, e-commerce and technology. Tomorrow we have biotechnology, healthcare and the sciences, including research. And then we have community engagement, including education, advocacy, and policy. I've memorized all of these and I'm very proud of that, but I cannot thank you all enough for joining us. And we're going to go ahead and transition over to Brazen, take this time to get a break for yourself and we'll see you all soon, fight on.